Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rabina. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you exit this video. If you're a returning subscriber, hey, thank you so much for checking out my latest video and for joining me here on YouTube. For those of you who don't know, I am also on Instagram at smg underscore Robina D, which is also in the description. So today's video, we are talking about all things money. We are gonna talk about what it was like, how much money I made in my first month having a vendor booth at a antique mall. Um, it's smaller than a mall, but it's, yeah. We're gonna talk about how much money I made. I'm gonna tell you guys uh, three things that I have learned from this first little bit of having an antique booth. And let's just jump right into it. All right, the first thing I wanna say is, I got my first check. I'm so excited. I got my first check. First little bit of money that I made from this little hobby adventure, this little hobby adventure. And drum roll please. Your girl made $73.90. Here are my top three things that I have learned in this first little bit of having my very own antique booth. The first thing that I learned is that setting up the booth was a lot more difficult than actually maintaining it. The hardest part was just getting the booth set up and getting my items in there the way how I wanted them. And if you guys have not checked out my previous video where I talked about setting up the booth, I will link it up above for you to check out so you can see what my booth actually looks like if you're brand new here. If you follow me on Instagram, I also have been posting lots of content about my vendor booth in the stories, so you can find more content there if you're looking for inspiration or if you're looking to start your own booth. In my booth, I have farmhouse decor, I also have jewelry, I have some educational toys, and then as the seasons progress, and we get into um, like 4th of July, Thanksgiving, Christmas, stuff like that. I'll bring out seasonal stuff just for the holidays. Like right now, we're in the month of February, so I put out a lot of stuff that was pink and red and like Valentine-y colors to try and draw people's attention in. But for the bulk of it, for the most part, it's farmhouse decor is what you'll find out and find in my booth. And I don't know if you guys can hear the outside sounds but my son who is eight is practicing piano so i hope that's not distracting as background music but you know piano geniuses are um not made overnight they're made key by key and he is practicing right now because the lord is going to use him he's eight years old and i know the lord's going to use him in playing his piano definitely the setup part the beginning part the sourcing part of getting everything together for the booth was a lot more difficult than this maintenance stage. For the maintenance stage, I go to the booth once a week, I tidy up, I try and move things around. If I'm having a sale, I post signs that I'm gonna be having a sale and for what specific days. Um, I have learned that the owner of, of this specific merchantile where my booth is at, this at has a front area right when you enter the door where people can pull things from their booth and kind of showcase them right there in the front. So that way when people walk in immediately, they see those items that are showcased and they can gravitate towards them and sort of buy them. So that's what I did. I took two of my bigger items because it's my first time actually using this showcase space. I took two of my bigger items and I put them in the showcase space, hoping that they will move. I haven't bought anything new to go into the booth but I do go there once a week and tidy up and I do try and move things around, especially on that large shelf that you guys saw that I have that's in the back of the booth. I try and move things around, keep it fresh. That's one tip that I would highly recommend if you are going out on this venture of having an antique booth, go in there at least once a week, tidy your space up and move things around to make the booth look fresh, always looking fresh. The second thing that I have learned, was that the second thing? Okay, setup was more difficult than maintenance. Um, thing number two was keep things fresh by moving things around the booth. And the third thing that I learned is if you don't have items that are moving and you really want to move them, either do one of two things, either have a sell on that item or on the entire booth where prices are marked down or see if your 
if your vendor area has a booth situation like mine where closer to the door they have vendors pull items and set them up near the door um, at the same price point with you know with your tags and see if you can get the items to move that way of course after 30 days if i still have these same items in my booth you know this is not a storage unit my antique booth is not a storage unit i want items to move so i can put other items in and we are coming on the warmer months here in florida so that means people are going to start having yard sales antique sales and i'm going to be um, shopping around those places because i want to make sure that i can get merchandise that my customers are going to like and that i can get it at the lowest price point so that i can turn a profit on it that's just good marketing that's how marketing and business works. You buy a product at one price point, your wholesale price, and you mark it up retail so that way you can make a sell uh, amount of money on those items. Plus also, I need to make sure that I make my rent, which is $50 a month at the Merchantile. So that's also something that I keep in mind. So my first paycheck, a little bit less than $100, but still very, very good for the first little bit of me having an antique booth. If you have any other questions about having an antique booth, what it's like, if you want to see the antique booth, if you want me to do one of those day in the life of an antique booth owner, let me know because I can definitely do that on a Saturday when I have more time, especially when it's comes time for yard sales and antique sales I can take you guys along so you can see how I source my items and how I price my items because that's another tip that I will share a bonus tip when it comes to pricing items I like to use eBay I use Macari I use Poshmark I use all of the reseller type things I also do googling especially if I find a rare item that it's a rare antique I want to price it so that it will move but I don't want to cheat myself out of making money by pricing it too low. So there's a delicate balance between I found this rare item and online this is what it's going for. I paid this number for it and now I want to find a happy medium to give my customers a good deal on this item but also move this item out of my antique booth. Like I said before, my antique booth is not a storage unit. I do want to make this a micro business as I call it because it is a business within a business. If you have any other questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.